What's going on, everybody? Steve here. I'm here with Josh, and this is day number two, workshop number two of our four-part 100% free Amazon workshop. So a little bit about Josh. Josh is an incredible guy. This guy literally, this must have been about five or six years ago. He was watching my YouTube videos back when I used to be in my little warehouse. I don't know if you guys have been following me that long, but I used to have my little warehouse and um, it wasn't even a warehouse. It was like an office space. And I had all my clothing racks in my office and I had my buddy Vinny there who now has his own eBay business. He was my employee at the time. And you know, I was teaching everyone about clothing. I was doing clothing full time. And this is how Josh started. He went from literally making $7.25 an hour, working as a temp, living in a 400 square foot apartment, selling on eBay. That was the stepping stone. And now over five years later, $11.2 million in sales, on pace to do over $3 million this year with his private label business, getting ready to lock down a deal to make it, I believe, around 92 units now. So he's built up a real estate empire. So this guy is really gone from rags to riches. So excited to have you here and so pumped up for this video, man. How's Austin, Texas treating you, Josh? Fantastic, man. Uh, the sun rays aren't as much as uh, the sun rays on that beach scene yesterday, but I'll take it, man. I want to know, for everyone watching, I want you to type, I miss the beach. For anybody who was at the beach yesterday, and for the folks who are like, Steve, what are you talking about? The beaches are closed. It's kind of an inside joke. You, you would have had to have been at yesterday's show to know what we're talking about. But today we're in the workshop and I'm, I'm looking in the comments right now. If you are watching live, let us know in the comments right now. Say hello. Let us know where you're from. And also if you have any questions regarding yesterday's uh, workshop, workshop number one, where we covered the whole entire research phase, researching and finding products to sell on Amazon, then drop a question below. So it looks like we got a bunch of people in the house. We got B saying, I miss the beach. So <laughs> B was at the beach yesterday. We got Shannon Motes in the house, dropping a smiley face emoji. Love your background as well. That's even nicer than the beach right there. We got Michelle coming in from Maryland. We got Chris here. What's going on? $20. I like that name. <laughs> we got Kazawi from San Francisco. We got Clearwater in the house. We've got Orlando coming and dropping in. We got Tennessee. We've got Michigan. We've got Nancy from Tennessee as well. St. Louis. What's going on, Roger? Dave is asking, are we on hold? Oh, we're not on hold. You can't stop us. You can't hold us back right now. We're barging through the gates and we're going to be dropping some knowledge today. We got Regina coming in saying, hello, hello. Great to see everybody. What's going on, Courtney? Mark. So many people watching live. Mary from Wisconsin. Gennaro from Orlando. So let's get right into the video right now. And I do actually, before we get into the video, I do want to say for the folks who haven't already, if you don't know, we have a workshop tomorrow and the next day. So we have a workshop. Today's Wednesday, right? So we have a workshop on uh, Thursday and Friday. All the days are blending in. We've got a free workshop on Thursday and Friday. So that's going to cap off the free workshop. And then on, I believe it's Tuesday, May 12th. I'm not sure if it's May 12th. Um, yeah, well, but yeah. we have an exclusive webinar that's going to be going down and everything you learned in this workshop in video one, two, three, and four is all building up to this one big webinar where we put it all together. So if you haven't already signed up for that webinar, it's completely different than this. If you sign up for the workshop, that's not included. It's hundred percent free, the webinar, but it isn't no right re replay webinar. It's exclusive. The content's going to be so good that it's only going to be up for a little bit. So it's that first link in the description and I will drop that link for you guys really quick. It's rakenprofit.com slash FBA training. So we've got workshops all week, super pumped up. What did we cover yesterday, Josh? Can you kind of sum up what we covered in a nutshell? Because that's going to build upon today's workshop, which is all about sourcing. So I'll hand over the mic to you, brother. Yeah. So a recap of what we did yesterday, guys, is we identified how to find that one product. You know, we always talk about your one product away. So we literally dove down um, and step by step showed you guys what is the characteristics of a winning product? What should we look for? What are some of those key items? So just to recap for those of you that aren't there or we're not there yesterday, um, a few of those things. Number one is going to make sure that, that product's not seasonal. Number two, we want to make sure that, that product's not trending. Number three, we want to make sure that we can private label this product, differentiate it, add some value so we're not in that red ocean, we're in that blue ocean. And then number four, we want to make sure that we're at a bare minimum 30% profit margin. That way we can really make some dough with selling these products. 
So those were kind of a few of the things that we hit yesterday and we dove in and showed you guys step by step exactly how to navigate, find these products um, and a few different strategies to verify and validate these products. So once you find this product and you find that product that you think is a, a winner and you're ready to launch this product, the next step is going to be contacting a supplier and finding a supplier. And that's what we're going to cover today. Awesome, man. Awesome. So for anyone who has any questions, I'll be looking at the comments for the next minute. If you have any questions about the research phase, it's very important that you get these answered right now from Josh. And again, Josh, you currently have how many products right now, private label? 12? 12, 12 main across, yep. 12 across three, so, three, 12, uh, so, three, 12 across three brands. Okay. So he has 12 products across three brands for anyone who's new. Um, you've been doing private label on Amazon for over five years now. Yep. Mm -hmm. You've imported a bunch of products. You've actually failed on quite a few products when you first got started that we talked about. So he's not some wonder boy where everything he touches turns to gold. Right. There's a system and a process that he's followed, but it's very important that you get this right. The research phase, because like we were talking about yesterday, Josh, you can get the research. If you get the research phase wrong, the sourcing, the micro launch and the scale is pretty much a waste. Oh yeah. It's, it's the first, it's the first step and it's the most important step. And it's like a foundation, right? If you build the foundation is the most important part to any type of building, um, any type of infrastructure. And if you really, you know, you, um, fly by the corners and you don't take your time with building the foundation, then the whole, the whole building is just not going to work or it's not going to last long. So with this business, the, the first and most important thing is finding that product and taking your time. And one of the biggest mistakes I see people make with this business is they rush into product research. They rush into finding this product because it's a combination of anxious to find that product and excited to find that product. And what happens is, guys, like you really want to make sure that you stick to your guns. I tell everybody, we're trying to find a product that's going to make us $10,000 a month. If that's your goal, $5,000 a month, stick to those metrics do not compromise. And so many people, maybe a week goes by, two weeks go by, and they start to get anxious and they find another product and it's below those metrics and then they sacrifice or they basically just uh, compromise. So one of the biggest pieces of advice I can give you guys is when you're looking for these products, don't compromise, don't become burned out, like make sure it's fun, uh, don't pressure yourself and have realistic expectations. So many people start this business out, you know, this is a real business, not a get rich quick scheme or anything like that. And so many people want to get started and they want to get results as fast as possible. We all want results, right? But what I will tell you guys is that you want to make sure that you're patient. You want to make sure that you make this something fun. And that's why I tell people when you're starting out, hey, a lot of this is going to be overwhelming. So don't burn yourself out. Less is more when you're starting out. Instead of going seven hours in one day and just going crazy, give yourself one hour and then make sure that you're consistently searching. So that's a few tips that I give people all the time. Awesome. Cool. It sounds like you really, uh, you know, covered that topic well, because there's not a ton of comments coming in. We do have a lot of people watching live right now. So that's a really good sign. So it looks like people are ready to, to, to go on to that next phase. So I do want to say before you guys get into this next phase, if you don't already have a pen, have a pad, have a Google doc, a tablet, something open because sitting on the sideline and just passively listening, I mean, it's better than doing nothing, but if you could actually write things down, it trains your brain to really dial in and really see the details between the lines that are so important. So make sure you're taking down the notes. If something resonates, if something sounds interesting, write it down. If you have any questions, write it down because we're going to be answering questions towards the end of this video. And also at the end of the video in about 45 minutes, we're going to be giving away two Amazon gift cards and uh, PayPal payouts, right? So you could either get a gift card or you could just get cash to your PayPal. So we're going to be giving away some prizes to reward for the folks who hang around till the end. So if you guys are ready to rock and roll, let's smash that like button. And let me ask you a question, Josh. So when it comes to sourcing, because we're talking about sourcing right now, where do people go to source products? What is your strategy? I'm sure there's a bunch of different places people can go. Are you sourcing domestically? Are you sourcing internationally? And even to bring into the mix with the current state right now, with a lot of things going on with you know what and COVID, how are you dealing with that? Where are you sourcing? Where are your students sourcing? So let's let's kind of dive into that. Yeah. So um, one of the largest um, websites for sourcing products is going to be Alibaba. They're one of the largest ones and they have subsidiaries like AliExpress. A lot of people know about AliExpress, which is more for drop shipping, but Alibaba is going to be the largest and it's going to be the best. That's where I go. That's where I recommend. The beautiful thing about Alibaba, Steve, is it's absolutely free 
to create a membership. It's free to get started and go ahead and start finding these suppliers. So there's no restriction. You don't need any type of license or anything like that in order to go and communicate with these direct suppliers. And you're going to be able to find some of these huge suppliers that are literally manufacturing for household name brand products. So we want to head over to Alibaba.com and we'll break that down step by step in a minute and show you guys how to navigate it, what it looks like, how to contact suppliers, what to look for and all that great stuff. But in reference to question number two, you know, with the you know what going on, how is that affecting <laughs> importing uh, of the products and so on and so forth? Um, to be completely honest, when things out, when the outbreak happened, nobody really knew the direction that it was going. And this started over in Asia, started over in China. So things were impacted a little bit, but it was literally a week, two weeks before things were literally centralized. They went into quarantine and things kept moving. So literally since then, we haven't had any issues. They were really strict with things. They quarantined everything. They got rid of everything. They did all the precautions. And now things are moving as usual. And matter of fact, with um, this whole situation going on and people being quarantined in the U.S., sales on Amazon has literally skyrocketed to the point where they literally um, put off Prime Day. Prime Day is one of the biggest days for Amazon. Really? And they literally sent out an email to all Amazon sellers like, hey, things are so crazy right now that we're going to push Prime Day off and we'll give you guys a heads notice, right? So they usually give you a window about when, it, when it's going to start. And things are so crazy with the increased amount of sales that they put that off. Um, and, you know, Steve, a lot of people know about the non-essential items. Amazon did place a hold on non-essential items for about two weeks and people were freaking out. First and foremost, some of the best categories to sell in were actually deemed essential items. And people have this misconception that essential items were masks or gloves or hand sanitizer or medicine. Believe it or not, there were seven or eight different categories and subcategories that you could sell in and a majority of them are the top big uh, categories anyway. And the reason why they did that, Steve, is to let some of these essential items that people need come in and get checked in because so many Got people it. were sending inventory because uh, sales were literally skyrocketing. So with that being said, things are back to normal. Business is great. Amazon sellers are seeing increased sales across all categories. Uh, logistics is operating as normal, no issues with importing, exporting. And when it comes to manufacturers, like Steve mentioned, you can choose domestic, meaning inside the U.S., or international, meaning outside the US. One of the biggest being China. Some people use India and Pakistan for textiles and different products, but the biggest um, B2B is gonna be um, China to the US. So that's the majority of the um, importing that we do, manufacturing that we do are with Chinese suppliers. Awesome, so what we're talking about is Alibaba.com. That's the main website that Josh is using. And now I wanna show a hands right now. I want you to put in the comments, yes, if, you want Josh to share his screen and actually go into, well, what we'll do is we'll actually go into, maybe we'll use Jungle Scout or we'll go into Amazon. We'll find a product that looks that looks interesting. And then if Josh is up for it, I'm like, I'm speaking for Josh now, but I'm I got my fingers crossed that he'll be willing to do it. But I'm hoping, and, and how cool would it be? Put a yes in the comments. If we could have Josh find a product on Amazon that's maybe selling for 20 or 30 bucks and see if we could reverse engineer it and see where they're getting it and how much it's going for. And then maybe we could cover like the do's and don'ts, biggest mistakes to avoid and kind of cover the Alibaba platform. Because when you're sourcing off of Alibaba, you're sourcing from manufacturers, right? You're, you're sourcing it from companies. And I know there's a rating system. Um, there's different rules that they have in terms of how many um, products they're willing to sell you at once. There's ways to negotiate. There's a lot of stuff. So I want to show a hands, put a yes in the comments if you want Josh please Josh say yes. <laughs> um, if you want Josh to show firsthand how to do this, because I think that would be a really, really cool exercise. We got Noel saying yes. We got Mark saying yes. We got Michael saying, do it, do it, do it. We got Sterling Mills saying yes. Regina saying yes. Good vibes, good vibes, good vibes. Chris is saying one. She's throwing a one in there right now. So this is, this means that I think we're going to have to do it. What do you think, Josh? Well, it looks like the uh, the people have spoken, Steve. So let's go ahead and uh, and dive over to uh, Alibaba. <laughs> Thank cool. you. Know, bro. <laughs> I'll let you um pull up your screen, and I would go full screen, um, just in case you're going to switch in between tabs. So um, yeah, I'll we're just gonna, get. Oh, I'm ready to rock and roll, man. If you stay ready, you don't got to get ready, right? You just got to make sure to add uh, do the share screen at the bottom so it pops up, and then I could throw it on the screen for you when you're when you're ready to rock. All righty. We're ready. And uh, just share your entire screen. Screen one. All right. Yes. Ready when you are. 
Okay, cool. I just threw the screen on for you. Let me just take this comment off. Okay, cool. So let us know in the comments right now. What's up? We got Romer the Romer in the house saying yes. If you guys aren't following Romer the Romer, give him a follow. One of the best booksellers on Amazon I know. So we're here right now. Let me pull a couple of these things off the screen, give you that full screen. Yeah, so, you know, brother, oh. all I see is my screen. Let's rock it. All right, ready to rock and roll. So we're going to head over to Amazon really quick, guys, because when we're doing product research, um, we're going to find these products in Amazon. And then once we look at these products, we critique these products, we verify and validate these products. Now it's time to find the supplier. And guys, if you missed the video number one, I highly suggest that after this video, you guys go back and rewatch video number one, where we literally go into the nitty gritty and we show you guys step by step copy and paste a few different strategies to find these products that have high demand and low competition. So let's just go ahead and type in A and let's see what pops up, right? So here comes a unique one, air fryer. So let's say that we're doing our research. We find this air fryer and this is one of the products that we want to see, right? Let me just go ahead and uh, choose one of these top selling ones. Um, you know what? Let's just choose the top one. So once we find the product that we want to go ahead and find the supplier for, guys, we're going to head over to Alibaba.com. Now, what I like to do, guys, when you're looking for the supplier is you're going to want to type in the main keyword. So the main keyword is going to be Power Air Fryer, which is the name of this product. Now, you want to take into consider, uh, consideration any type of key components or features that you want when you're looking for this product, like 5.3 quart or XL or things like that. Because when you head over to Alibaba, and we type in Power Fryer, the name of your product that you're searching, there's going to be a ton of different ones, right? So once we type this in, it literally is going to pop up all these different um, air fryers, right? And you literally just scroll through till you find one that is close to the one that you're looking for, right? So if you see right here, let's, you know what, Steve, let's see if we can do this so we can compare. If you do this, right, this is what I like to do is sometimes have mine up in a small screen and literally just scroll through these hover through these until we find one that's pretty similar, right? So you see there's a lot of them that are pretty similar that do the same thing, same features. I've seen one up here that was pretty close. Where's she at here? Oh, here it is right here. So let's just say that this red one, right? What is it? 5.5. This one's 5.3. This was 5.5 liter. So this one's touchscreen. It's a little bit bigger. So you can see here, guys, that on Amazon, they're selling this product for $99. And you can see here that um, they have this price for $35.50. So what we want to do is we want to click on this product, and it's going to take us to the product page. But a few things that Alibaba does that's really neat, guys, they recently just did this, which saves us a lot of digging time, is they show us some of these key components right here. So a few things that you want to ask yourself, because there's tons of suppliers. Literally, if we scroll down to the bottom, guys, you can see there's multiple pages. There's pages and pages and pages of all of these different suppliers. So once we find a product that is similar to the product that we want, um, we want to make sure that the product, that the manufacturer is a good supplier. So what are the characteristics of a good supplier? Well, one of the main things that I like to look at is their rating. So if you hover right here, you'll see that the, uh, based out of a five-star rating, five being the best, obviously one being the worst, it will show you their rating based off supplier service, on-time delivery, and product quality. So that's pretty self-explanatory, but that's something I like to look at right away. Next, I like to see if they are verified, if they are a ver verified supp uh, supplier, which means that they're certified, they're inspected by the BV group or the ISO group, which is pretty much like the Better Business Bureau. Here in the States, we use the Better Business Bureau, but with overseas, there's different regulations and companies that they use for that you know, whole trust process. So I like to look to see if they're verified and I like to see how long have they been in business. Um, not saying that you can't find a good supplier or manufacturer that's one year old like this guy up here, but obviously the longer they've been in business, the more trust, the more authority, um, the more experience um, that they're going to have. So that's just nice to look at in reference to finding your supplier. And then I like to look at the amount of transactions. So some of them, if they have no transactions, that tells you that they're rather selling this product, this product that they're manufacturing is new or they're a newer company, right? So I like to see someone who's established, who has a track record, who has at least a couple hundred thousand dollars in sales um, or at least five figure sales bare minimum. And then the most important thing, guys, is going to be the response rate. So you see this guy has 20% response rate. That sucks, right? You see this guy up here has got 89% response rate. 
we want to make sure that the response rate is above 75% because you have to understand guys, once you find your supplier, that's the, I mean, excuse me, once you find your product, the most important thing is finding your product. The next important thing guys is finding the right supplier and your supplier relationship is very important guys. And if you're reaching out to them and you can't get in contact with these guys, you can't get in contact with these guys. You can't understand them. They're not getting back to you in a timely uh, matter. It's just going to affect the entire process, right? So when you click on these suppliers, guys, it'll show you a couple of things that you want to look at. Again, here's all that important stuff that we're looking at. It's going to show you your MOQ, right? MOQ stands for minimum order quantity. Now, guys, I'm going over a lot of gems and I'm talking pretty fast because we got a lot to cover and we want to make sure you guys get gems. So make sure that you guys have a pen, make sure you guys have a piece of paper and you guys are taking notes because note takers are money makers. And I would hate for you guys to miss any of this valuable content. So we want to look for the MOQ. The MOQ stands for minimum order quantity. Now, a lot of people, a lot of newbies will look at this and say, oh, well, they want 500 pieces or they want 100 pieces. When we're launching these products, we don't want to launch a crap load of products, uh, units, because we want to make sure that this product works. So the way that we negotiate lowering the MOQ or minimum order quantity is by reaching out to them and just stating like, hey, I've done my research. I'm an Amazon seller. I've done my research. I think this product's going to do well, but I want to make an initial test batch. If things work out, I'm going to be ordering frequently, usually every one month to two months, frequently throughout the year. And they'll sometimes give you some resistance, but they want that long-term relationship. So they might give you some resistance and some pushback, but nine times out of 10, they will agree. So don't let this MOQ fool you to the point where, or um, you know, scare you to the point where you don't want to reach out to them. Now, if you scroll down, you'll be able to find the overview, all the product details. So again, if you're on Amazon, right, let's pop up the Amazon listing. Oh, I've got all types of crap up. Let's pop up the Amazon listing. And if we're in Amazon and we want it to be specific uh, things like XL or 5.3 quarts or things like this that we want to match or differentiate, then you can go down here and you can actually reference them. So here's 5.5 liter We want uh, or 5.5 liters. We can match that with the leaders and make sure that everything that we want um, is here. And if we don't see something, we can simply just ask them because if it's not advertised, sometimes the supplier can add it for us. They can change it for us, so on and so forth. But we'll sh they'll, they'll usually show all the different models. They'll show their facility, a little bit about them. And all that stuff's cool. Um, but we want to look for certifications. We want to look for big brands. So all of this is good, right? Everybody knows Walmart. Everybody knows T Target and Panasonic and uh, QVC. So if they're working with large brands, if they have their certificates and everything looks legit, nine times out of 10, they are. Um, so once we do our due diligence, guys, we want to go ahead and reach out to these suppliers. And before we do that, guys, I want to show you one more thing. Um, you can click on this company profile and it'll actually show you where they're at. It'll show you who owns it. It'll show you how many employees they have. It'll show you the year established. So these are things that I like to look at, right? So if they have a thousand plus employees, they've been in business for 10 years. This isn't the small guy. This is a big guy. This is a huge manufacturer. You see they do stuff for Walmart. And that means that they have good customer service. That means that nine times out of 10, customer relations may be an English native, which is really nice when you're reaching out to manufacturers because in China, there's a 12 hour time difference and a language barrier. On top of that, you're going to have that trust because they're not going to screw you over. They're not going to screw their multi-million dollar operation over just to get over on you for a couple hundred bucks. And you know, to be completely honest and transparent, there are scams in every industry. So you just want to uh, cross your T's and dot your I's. And another big issue, um, a newbie mistake that a lot of people make is going with trading companies over manufacturers, right? So what I want you guys to see is business type. It says manufacturer first, then comma trading company. If you're looking at a supplier and it just says trading co or trading company, and they have 40 employees or 50 employees, under 100 employees, and they've only been up for and operating for a couple of years, chances are they're solely a trading company, which is a middleman. Now, trading companies, you can have trading companies that do solid business, but your prices are always going to be higher, your turnaround is going to be lower, and the customer service is going to be worse. They're not going to have an English native uh, representative direct to work with, right? When you're dealing with manufacturers, they're larger operations, so turnaround is much quicker. You can see how huge their operation is. They've got way more employees, so the turnaround is faster. Um, usually, they have English native reps that are going to help you who get back to you promptly. Um, and you know, they're not going to ruin their reputation for a couple hundred bucks. So once we cross the T's, we dot our I's, we're going to literally contact the supplier. 
you can do this chat now, but I usually like to contact them. So if you literally click it, it's going to take you to this little generic screen. Now, what I like to do, guys, and this is going to save you a stupendous amount of effort and time, which is a newbie mistake I used to make. I used to literally go in here and type by hand the email, right? I just threw a bunch of gibberish in there, but I used to type by hand this message to each and every supplier. And then I would go back and I would find another one. And then I would click on them. And then I would click, if I verified and validated them, I would click on contact and I would write another message. And this takes a bunch of time. Well, with this business, guys, the name of uh, the success loves speed, right? The name of the game is speed, first to market, first to dollar. So a little hack that's going to save you guys a lot of time is to just pop up your notepad on your computer. Every note, uh, computer has a notepad or just pull up an email. Just go to your Google account, act like you're going to write an email and write um, the message and then just copy this message and then paste this message directly into this um, chat box. So when you're going to reach out to all these suppliers, instead of handwriting these messages every single time, you actually have something, a template that you're just changing the name and you're copying and pasting it so you can actually do this quickly. Now, another thing that I'll give you guys, another gym that I'll give you guys is I always recommend uh, communications outside of Alibaba because the system's slow and it's just old school. I always like to drop my Skype ID as well as my WhatsApp number. So you can do either or, but I'll go ahead and uh, at the bottom of the, um, the email or the message, I'll give them my name. I'll give them my Skype ID. I'll give them my WhatsApp and my email address. And I'll tell them that I prefer any of these other than Alibaba to expedite the process. And they're all about expediting the process so you can get your product and they can get paid, right? And once you start to get the hang of this and you start to bring in some dough and stuff like that, you can really take it to the next level by creating a letterhead or a template and then uploading that PDF a template. Right here, it says add attachment. Um, you can use a tool like I'm on a Mac uh, MacBook, so... Uh, you can use a tool like Pages is what I use, and I'll create a template, nice letterhead. I'll put my logo up at the top, and then I'll just attach that ta uh, attachment. Now all you got to do is go to these different suppliers, hit contact, and add that attachment. So either or, both of those work, but that's going to save you a lot of time. Uh, let me see if I can – oh, man, we're in the matrix, baby. Let me see if I can uh, <laughs> share it. Yeah, so that's pretty much the ins and out of, outs of everything, and that's pretty much what we're looking for when we're contacting these suppliers. When we find these products and we go into Alibaba, we want to make sure that they are legit. We want to make sure that they have a good rating. We want to make sure that they have a, um, a verified business. We want to see how many employees do they have. We want to see how long have they been in business. Um, and then we want to reach out to them. And a few things that I want to discuss, one of the big ones that um, can kind of hurt your guys' momentum during this process is if you reach out to 100 suppliers, maybe 30 will get back to you. Because when you're reaching out to them and you're saying you want to do a small test batch and they see you're a small Amazon seller, for these large guys, it may not be worth their appetite. So it's very, very realistic um, and it's very normal for about 30 to 40% to get back to you, 50% yeah. around that number. So don't feel that you're doing something wrong or the, the product is too saturated or because of the times or something like that, something weird's going on. That's just the way it is. So the game is to go and find these suppliers, reach out to them quickly, doing the copy and paste or the uploading the template strategy that I shared you guys. So you can literally find that product and you can go hammer 100, 200 um, suppliers in one day and then you just sit back, sit back and wait. And usually they get back to you pretty quickly. Like I said, if you reach out to 100, maybe between 30 to 50, they'll get back to you. Um, and once they get back to you, now it's time to start negotiating. So a few tips that I'll give you guys when you're starting. This is another newbie mistake that I made. And I thought I was doing everything right. When people think about sourcing and manufacturing and um, importing, uh, especially internationally with China, they think about um, the price being low. So a mistake I made as a beginner is I would literally beat my suppliers to death. And I thought by I was like the king negotiator. Like I would go in here on these products and just beat them to death and just be the hard ass and the, try to get the best price. And what was happening is my account was being compromised and I was getting bad reviews and it was messing me up in the long term over pe uh, pennies because yeah. Um, what happens, and my supplier told me this, Steve, and I'll never forget this. I tell everybody this story. When my first product that failed was a dual port USB car charger. And I right. remember beating them to death on it. And the, the things were already like 20 cents and I was selling them for uh, $7.99 at the time. So I, I was beating them for pennies. And to the point where I did a couple orders and then it failed. I told you that, that whole story. But 
I remember that supplier telling me that, Josh, like we want to keep your business, but understand that we operate off of volume, not high margins. So basically they make pennies, but they operate mm -hmm. off of large volume and long relationships. So she goes on to tell me that whenever we negotiate, if we are able to drive that cost down, our goal is to get you the price that you want. But what you have to understand with negotiating and manufacturing overseas is that price is not coming from the company's margin because their margin is so slim. So if it's not coming from the company's margin, which I thought they were making all this type, type of money because they're some, uh, suppliers in China, right, right. where is it coming from? Well, it's coming from the quality of the product. So that product flopped for multiple reasons, one being saturated, two being it's a uh, under $20, uh, so it's an add-on item. But number three being the quality was so poor, it was an electronic product because I was driving them down on cost so much that the internal components was garbage. One out of every three weren't working. They weren't working long. They weren't charging. There was inconsistencies. So I always tell everybody, make sure that, yeah, make sure that you're negotiating, but make sure within reason. There's a difference between price gouging and negotiating. Um, and focus on making your margin with the quality of your product on the back end, not on the front end by beating your supplier up because you want you and your supplier relationship to be mutually lucrative, mutually beneficial. You don't want your supplier to feel like, oh man, I gotta deal with Steve again. This guy's gonna beat me up for an hour for six cents on this $10,000 order. I don't even wanna talk to Steve right now. And then we're gonna right. launch the product and then the product's gonna flop and then you're not gonna order more of the product, so on and so forth. So learn from my mistakes because that will save you a lot of time it'll save you um, a lot of headache and make the money on the back end, right? Amateurs monetize the front end, experts monetize the back end. So I'd rather pay more than my competitors for my products to be manufactured, but have those manufacturers be of a, a higher quality. And when I introduce it to the marketplace, I'm able to add uh, more value and charge more. There's no resistance with Apple. And we talked about this yesterday. Like everybody sees Apple and they don't think to the fact that these products are two to three times more than their competitors like Hewlett Packard or Samsung or any of those other electronic companies because of the fact of the quality, the customer service and the buyer experience, the packaging, everything's higher quality. So people pay that premium. Um, so take, make your margin on the back end. Don't drive down the price on the front end by beating um, your suppliers up. Yeah, super valuable. One of my uh, really good friends and mentors, his name's Andy. He's been selling private label for, I think, well over five years. And he said, you can beat them up, but like you said, you're going to get these low quality products. And there's a couple problems with that, right? Your profit might be higher, but what's going to happen is you're going to get all these returns. You can have all these issues. And when things get returned, they get recycled back in your inventory. And it's this vicious cycle of returns, low feedback. Now you're getting your, your, your accounts in jeopardy. There's all these things that could happen. And plus, um, my, my good friend Andy was telling me about you can hire inspection companies. So when you put in your order, and I'm kind of jumping the gun, say you have a order of maybe 500 items, you can hire inspection companies for a couple hundred dollars. He was telling me to go and inspect everything. But the problem is if you have these low quality products, you're just going to have a huge mess on your hands and it's going to slow down the the shipment of your items into Amazon because the inspection company is going to fail it. And now you're going to have them go back and recreate it again. Now you're in this negotiation problem and challenge. So I really think that advice is uh, very sound. Yeah, absolutely. And people ask me to, to hit on top of that all the time. Like, should I hire an inspection uh, company? And you guys will learn on the free web class that we do um, on the 12th. We break this down step by step, but there's, like the whole strategy with the AMZ formula is to find the product as quick as possible and to launch it as quick as possible and as inexpensive as inexpensive as possible. And then the verify and validate. And we'll get into it on the, on the, uh, the other videos, but let me give you a difference. Like if I'm launching this rock that says believe, and this is my product right here, there's no reason to spend the extra amount of money to go and get this product inspected. Now, if I'm launching this um, charging device for a phone, right? This portable charging device, this needs to get inspected because it has a function. So if your product is fragile, if it has a function, if it's if it has a use, um, then those are things that you want to ask yourself. Then you want to go ahead and get the inspection done. But if there are things like that are indestructible or don't have a function or don't have an electronic component or anything like that, then simply asking your supplier to uh, break everything down for you and give you um, a step-by-step -step, uh, recording of your products, 
will suffice. So the difference between the two is going with an inspection company. One of the ones that we use is Asia Inspections, right? Asia Inspections. So if you go with an inspection company, they're going to come to the facility. They're going to randomly open boxes and test the quality, test the consistency. They have this huge form that they go through. It's a huge checklist of things that they do, uh, consistency, quality, smell, durability, all these different things. And they go and do all these different things for you. And it usually costs between $300 to $1,000, depending on the oh, size wow. of, the size of the product, um, the um, extensive amount of um, tests that they need to do, so on and so forth. Um, and the differentiating factor on having your supplier do it is they're literally just going to send you videos, send you pictures. You can even tell them, like, if your product is semi fragile fragile, uh, fra fragile, excuse me, and you want to see how durable it is, you can say, hey, I need you to measure five feet off the ground or three feet off the ground and drop it. And I want to know what it looks like afterwards. So, so many people are afraid to jump through loops and don't want to like upset or aggravate their supplier. But you have to understand that your supplier is your friend, your supplier is your partner, and they're your eyes and ears of your products being made, facilitated, and shipped. So, so many people like don't understand the boundaries or don't want to overstep their boundaries. And I tell people all the time, um, get a relationship with your supplier. Feel free to ask questions like, hey, can I have a video of my product being made? Hey, can I have pictures of how my product's packaged? Hey, can you drop this for 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 me from a foot up? Can you use it? Can you, you know, ask, feel free to ask them questions of uh, them doing different things with your product because it can save you some money. But if your product has a function, like if it's a voice recorder and it has a function and it's an expensive product or it's a large order, then the $300 is nothing on a thousand units or a $10,000 right. order. Um, so make sure that you understand the difference between the two and don't feel like you're overstepping your boundaries, asking your supplier to do some work for you. Yeah. So hopefully everyone is realizing how important it is to communicate. There's so many different factors that you need to keep in mind going through this process, but communicating with your supplier is huge. Don't be scared to ask questions. Don't be scared to you know ask for videos. Don't be scared to ask them to test things out. You know, this is your baby. This is your investment. And you want to make sure that not only you're securing your investment for yourself and your financial being, but for your customers as well, because that's how you're going to create that long-term uh, income from these products by like what we were talking about yesterday is creating a really solid brand that takes care of your customers. So I need you guys to do me a big favor right now. If you're enjoying this video, go down below and smash that like button, show some love. And also I want to give away a $25 PayPal payout. I don't know what to call it. I can't think of anyone, <laughs> anything better than that. I want to give away $25 to somebody who can ask a really amazing question, a thoughtful question right now. So we've been, you know, hanging out for about a half hour right now. What's a question that you have? And hopefully you're all taking notes. What's a question that you have? Drop a question down below and we're going to feed some questions over to Josh. And also be sure to sign up for the webinar that's going down. It's on May 12th. Again, this workshop this four part workshop, this is this is part number two. We have three tomorrow and then fourth on Friday. It's 100% free. These replays will be open and available for about a week. But the webinar that really dives into the nuts and bolts, I mean, everything we're touching on over these four days is like a pillar, but there's only so deep we can go. The webinar, May 12th, rakenprofit.com slash FBA training. I'm telling you right now, it's going to build upon this foundational uh, learning that you guys are all going through right now. So be sure to sign up or put a note to sign up after this video. So we got some really good uh, comments. Yeah, I see, I see Janos E says, how about the quality of the product on your site? So that's a great question, Janos. So one thing that we, um, what we like to do when we're finding these products, if it's a specific product where we need to see it, we need to touch it, we need to smell it, we need to taste it, we need to try it, we want to see the function, one of those products like that, and it can be one of many, what we like to do is order a sample. So before we go and make that investment and actually launch that product or order that product and start the manufacturing process, we can actually order a sample. And nine times out of 10, Janos, um, what's going to happen is our supplier will cover the cost of the product, you cover the cost of the shipping, and they'll send it via e-packet or via Air Express. So you can get that sample in a couple of days. It usually costs anywhere between $18 to $50, depending on the size of the sample, the size of the shipping, et cetera. But that's a really good way to go ahead and get that uh, product sample, whether it's packaging, whether it's the product itself. That way you can see it and say, hey, you know what? I need this change. I would like this change. Or if you just want to compare the quality between two or three suppliers, you narrowed it down to three, prices are similar, 
products are a little different, you want to see which one is the best, you can go ahead and order those samples. Great question. Got a question from Michelle M. What are the legalities that you take on in running a private label business on Amazon? Awesome. Great question. So in reference to legalities, Amazon's going to take a lot of that liability because they're not even going to allow you to sell a product that isn't safe or that can harm someone or that's infringing on intellectual property, so on and so forth. But if something does get through the cracks, um, usually I tell people that if they're in a uh, topical or if, if they're selling a product that's a topical like lotion or shampoo or anything like that or an ingestible product like a supplement or a protein powder or something like that or um, something that goes in your eyes like a contact solution, products like that, you definitely want to have some, um, some liability insurance for your company. You want to make sure that your company is in a separate entity like a limited liability company or an LLC. That way you can defer um, – any type of um, issues coming on to your personal self. Now, that's my personal opinion. Like, I'm not a lawyer. I don't have a degree in law, but that's just from my experience and what I personally do. So other than that, you don't have to worry too much. Um, your supplier, your manufacturer is going to have all of their regulations, which they furnish you. Like, if you guys remember on Alibaba, we scrolled down. I showed you all the regulations, stuff like that. So they're going to be compliant. They're going to have regulations. They're going to be approved, whether it's FDA approved or whatever regulations they need. And then Amazon pre-approves your product that it's TOS compliant and that there's no funny stuff going on before they approve it. And then you just got to cross your T's and dot your I's. So good question. How many samples do you typically request? So when you order a sample, are you getting like three to have like just to, to, to kind of check their consistency, you know, in, in volume in a sense? Yeah. So good question. So it depends on the product. Um, it depends on the product. If it's a, a product that's going to have multiple colors and multiple variations, I'll get one of every single one. Um, if it's a product that has different accessories or different bundles or there's anything different with the product, I'll order one of each. Usually when you get samples, they'll send you two to three if they're small, if they're not expensive products. Um, so that depends case to case on the product. But like I said, nine times out of 10, if the product costs three bucks and you say, hey, I want three samples, they're not even going to charge you for the product. They're just going to charge the shipping and have you cover the shipping. I'm giving away $25 right now. This is the PayPal stimulus plan that I'm giving away 25 bucks. I, somebody, somebody said that in the comments. That was hilarious. Um, Mark center, 25 bucks. Send me an email, rake and profit at gmail.com screenshot your uh, YouTube. So we know it's you and we'll hook you up with that. But Mark's asking, what is your potential? What if your potential supplier this is a great question. What if your potential supplier cannot communicate well in English? Do you just move on or do you possibly offend by asking to speak to somebody else? I've actually had this happen before. So I'm, I'm curious what your thoughts are. Yeah. So um, possibly offend by asking to speak to someone else. Yeah. So Mark, um, usually when you're, when you're reaching out to suppliers and we find a product, we reach out to suppliers. Nine times out of 10, we start with text communication. Um, and usually the person, if, if you're dealing with a manufacturer, remember one of the differentiating factors between those manufacturers and those small trading companies is having a dedicated English sales representative who's going to be dealing with you. So you usually don't cross this issue. Um, but if you do cross this issue to the point where even the text is bad, it's not legible, the communication is bad, um, you can ask. Like, you Don't be worried about offending like, hey, you know what? I'd like to speak to another representative. Can I do this? Or just contact the same company from a different email. And if you get the same guy, then that tells you it's a small company. It's a small, um, it's a small company. It's a small business. So I would move on to someone else. But nine times out of 10, if you find a good supplier, a manufacturer, it's not a trading company, they have that dedicated staff because they understand that that issue exists, that they may have a good product, but if their communication is bad, they're not going to get the sale. So um, that's definitely something that um, that I would look into and I wouldn't worry about that too much. Do you happen to have a script that you use, Josh, um, for when you contact suppliers? I know you talked a little bit about it before, but do you have an actual script that you just copy and paste where there's almost like questions that you always ask? So you have the script, you just kind of copy and paste it? Yeah. So it, it depends based off of the product, but we basically have like, um, yeah, basically, yeah, like a script and then we change it based off of the products. That's something that, that we do has our letterhead, our logo, and then we copy and paste it, change it around, make sure that it meets uh, the criteria of the product, what we're looking for. And like I said, we just update it, uh, upload it into that uh, PDF section. So you can do that or you can just write something out and copy and paste. That's two different ways that we do it. 
We have a great question from Nicholas. What's going on, Nicholas? I love the bow tie in your picture looking super clean. Nicholas is saying or asking, I know Joshua said you don't need a business license to source products from Alibaba, which is true, but is there a certain time you should formally start a business, which means, you know, incorporate a business in LLC or, you know, however you decide to form that entity? Yeah, great question. So to sell on Amazon, you do not need an entity or any type of company. You can start with an EIN, which is an employee identification number, or you can start with your social security number. And Amazon's simply going to 1099 you. There's no X amount of money that you need in order to transfer that Amazon stipulates in order for you to transfer into an entity from your social or your identify uh, and an identification number. What I highly suggest and recommend each and everybody starting out is one of three things. If you have an existing company and it makes sense and it's not a conflict of interest or something totally different, like you're a nanny over here and then you're starting an Amazon business over here, use that entity, right? If it is a conflict of interest or you don't have an entity and you're a little tight on your budget, you don't have the extra capital to get started with creating an entity, so on and so forth, just get started, focus on your first product. Once you get some cash coming in, then go ahead and focus on creating um, that entity. But if you know that you want to go all in, you're willing and able and have that extra cash laying around, it is advantageous to just get started with everything out of the gate. So irregardless, if you're starting and cash is tight or you know you have access to those funds, those are two different strategies um, that I recommend. Awesome, man. Great answer. Is it cool if I keep throwing questions at you? There's a bunch yeah. of questions coming in. Yeah, I'm down. I love to make sure everybody gets value and all these questions get answered. Love awesome. It. If you folks are getting value in this video, do us a favor. The way, the only way we know is if you leave a comment and let us know, or you smash that like button. So if you guys are having fun, let us know, engage. And when you do engage and leave comments and take notes and hit the like button, you know, even though it's a little biased, I'm saying hit the like button. It keeps, I feel like you retain more when I'm on webinars, when I'm learning, I like to engage and move my body as much as possible. More will stick with you. Kimberly Swartz is asking, what would be the smallest amount um, that you start with as a test batch. Also, um, as a new, also uh, being new to the market as a seller. So I'm trying to figure out this question. Um, I don't think, I, I think she's more or less talking about the MOQ. I don't think we're talking about like getting that first test sample because we talked, you know, anywhere from one to three samples. But when you actually, you know, order that first batch and you're trying to kind of test the product out, because what we're going to be talking about in um, our next workshop, which is tomorrow, is the micro launch. So we're actually going to be covering this, but you know, now's a great time to talk about that. Yeah. So we'll kind of hit on it. Um, like you said, Steve, tomorrow is the micro launch. So the micro launch is like the proprietary sauce, secret sauce of the AMZ formula. So you guys do not want to miss that. Um, but basically, when we're finding these products and we're test ordering them, this is the complete opposite of what everybody will tell you. Everybody will tell you identify how much units they're selling per month and order a minimum of one month supply so you don't run out of inventory. Because running out of inventory is bad. However, what's worse than running out of inventory on a product that is winning is ordering a lot of a product that is not a winner and being stuck with complacent inventory that now is becoming extended storage, which is increased amount of fees. And then all your capital is tied in one spot or all your eggs are in one basket. So what I like to do in reference to the micro launch is I like to order around 30% of the projected monthly um, amount of units so we can get that to the marketplace as fast as possible. We can test them. And if they start to take off, meaning we have five days of consecutive sales, then we can reorder more inventory. So we're not caught with our pants down. If this is a losing product, we can pivot quickly, get rid of this product at a profit because remember our bare that's minimum huge. is 30 to 50% and we can move to the next one. Success is speed. And that's like the whole secret sauce as to how I launch products without losing money or without failing, uh, without going all in, all in on one product. So that's what I recommend. And this is from experience too, because I, I remember when I was um, in Austin, Texas, I, I shot some videos when I, you know, I got to meet Josh and his family, went over to your house and we were shooting uh, videos by the pool. I remember you uh, told me that your first, what was it your first two or three or four? How many products did you fail with at first? Three, three consecutive in a <laughs> row. <laughs> Sorry to throw you under the bus, but uh, <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, I respect it. You know, he comes from, you know, he doesn't come from just like being mentored under somebody or having all this money. I mean, he didn't have any technical skills. He didn't have any education. Like he had to figure this out on his own. And you know, the first couple of products, did you, did you make all those mistakes where you ordered too much? You spent too much money? Oh my God. It was, uh, 
it was ridiculous. I mean, did you know that. about this method? Like, there, was, there was no softwares in 2014, 2015. There was no softwares. There was no mentorship. Like all of this e-learning thing was not, hasn't taken off. There was YouTube channels, but literally a few, you being one of the only ones. Um, and I learned through trial and error. And with each and every mistake, which even which each and every mistake, I learned something new. So I learned why one product wouldn't work because it was like, I learned about, um, um, products being saturated because when I got it, they wouldn't move and I couldn't get them to sell. And I learned about products being add on products only with like my first product. Like I thought that something that was cheap and light would be good that people used every day. Well, it was super competitive number one. And because it was 20 bucks uh, and below, it was an add on product, which means you have to add on more products to be at $20. So it could be prime eligible. So no one was buying it. And then I learned by, like, it was just with each and every product that I had launched, I learned something new and I learned the hard way, but you know, there's a famous quote and I can't remember who said it, but failure is not a failure. Failure is a form of progression. So with each and every mistake that you make, you're actually learning something valuable that you can apply. So it can change your trajectory to where you need to go, which is success. Hey, I want to give a big shout out to my buddy, Pedro, who, uh, you know, I've been working with behind the scenes for quite a few months. He does a little bit of uh, consignment with me, uh, with my eBay business over at the warehouse, but he's, he's big into private label and uh, big shout out to Pedro. He's, uh, you know, he's trying to figure out how to go from seven to eight figures. So uh, I might have to connect you two behind the scenes because I know Josh, you're at seven. You're, what are you, what are you going to pass three mil this year? Yeah, so we we've grossed eight figures. Um, collectively, we're at seven figures, which is the reason why we're, we've stayed at seven figures is because my other companies I've been focusing on growing all of them collectively instead of neglecting two of them and letting one skyrocket. So right now, like everything, like is rising. The tide is rising like this versus like this. So um, mainly in reference to scaling from seven to eight figures, this business is very simple. It's repetition. So it's rinse and repeat. So I don't know how many brands you have, um, but if you have one brand, the easiest way to scale is to add to that catalog. So the quickest way, like once you get those first few products, you get those first few suppliers, you literally just ask for their catalogs. What I like to do is ask for their catalogs, go through their entire catalog and see if there's anything that complements my catalog that I don't have. Um, and I like to launch that. I also like to have my suppliers. And this is like another thing, like I exhaust. Yesterday with product research, we talked about exhausting product research. I exhaust my relationships with suppliers. I can't mm. tell you how many times I've had my suppliers for one product find me other products that they don't even make and actually broker the deal and make a little bit of money and save me time and money and get me better prices than I could even get on Alibaba. So I'm always exhausting my relationships. I'm always trying to find out what's the next big product. What are products that other sellers are selling? And when you reach out to these suppliers, you can simply ask them like, hey, what other products are Amazon sellers buying? Like they won't tell you the brand and how much they're selling and stuff like that, but they'll tell you, hey, we could, we make this product and a lot of Amazon sellers order it. And then you can actually go and do product research. So a few things that I like to do, and we'll talk about skyrocket and scale, I think on day number four. That's, yeah, it's Friday. So you definitely don't want to miss skyrocket and scale. But my two key components to scaling is number one, expanding the catalog or going into a new brand, new category, new subcategory, utilizing that strategy by getting the catalogs, going to the expos, having the supplier do the legwork for you. And number two, my secret sauce, what I'm known for in my personal brand and in my physical brands is uh, influencer marketing. A lot of Amazon sellers rely solely on Facebook ads, messenger bots, and PPC. They're not using influencer marketing. And I've generated millions of dollars through influencer marketing. Nothing's more profitable or more powerful. So make sure that you're reaching out to influencers across all the mediums, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, uh, mommy blogs, blog websites, um, uh, Snapchat. Make sure you're reaching out to all these influencers. You're having all these influencers driving that external traffic onto Amazon because Amazon's a search engine. And the search engine is called the A9 algorithm. That's their algorithm. It's like Google has an algorithm. Amazon has an algorithm. And one of the biggest points, like not to get all nerd lingo techno on the beginners and stuff, but this, I want to make sure he gets value. So the way the A9 algorithm works is it has multiple different factors. Like in SEO, nobody knows what's going to move the, the needle in Google, but people will know like, okay, anchor text, um, uh, specific links, outbound links, right? People know that silos, indexed keywords, things like this will move the needle. Well, with Amazon, one of the things that the A9 algorithm loves is exterior traffic because 
The way Amazon makes money is through Prime memberships. They also make money through Alexa, through Amazon Music, Amazon Videos, stuff like that. So Amazon is a multi-billion dollar company and they understand their LTV, which is a lifetime customer value um, number. So they know if they get new people to their website and they buy once, they know how much they'll make a year from now, three years from now, five years from now, because they have that that data. So the, the algorithm will actually give you brownie points for bringing that exterior traffic. So when mm. you're sending traffic outside of Amazon, not using PPC, but using uh, influencers and outside traffic, you're sending it directly to Amazon. The algorithm's like going nuts, like, holy crap, all these people are coming outside of Amazon onto this guy's listing. And they understand there's two ways that that traffic's getting there. Number one, a substantial amount of effort, meaning organic, which is sweat equity. Or number two, you are investing through traffic. So they reward you more than traffic from Amazon's um, algorithm within Amazon. So that's like two of the biggest things I do, man. Pedro, I know Pedro is really uh, pretty, probably pretty grateful to be tuning in right now. So hopefully that helps you out, Pedro. And I do want to say for everybody listening, because I feel like it's just going to go over a lot of people's heads. He used the, the phrase influencer marketing. I honestly believe that right now when it comes to e-commerce, if you have a YouTube channel, if you're selling courses, if you're whatever you're doing, whatever you're selling, influencer marketing is one of the best opportunities right now because PPC, Facebook ads, YouTube ads, Google, it is going through the roof. So anybody who's listening right now, who's getting ready to launch a program, a course, a product, anything, influencer marketing. And I do want to say we, we are going to cover a lot more of this in the webinar. So first link down below, sign up for that webinar because I feel like I don't want this to go over people's heads because there's been times in the past, like three, four years ago, I've heard something and I'm like, that sounds interesting. And then I just let it go. And then it cost me thousands of dollars because I'm like, wow, I didn't realize it. So just put that in your notes. Um, going through some of the questions, uh, sorceress of sales, how long should it take to get your order? So for samples, they're usually pretty quick. They, they sometimes take less than a week because they're going to ship it quickly. Um, when you order, let's say, for example, Josh, you order your first, uh, you know, batch of products, maybe a couple hundred, 500, whatever you decide to do with the micro launch. We want to get as little as possible to kind of test that idea and just let that idea fail and let it succeed and then kind of deal, deal with it from there. But uh, how long does it take from ordering it, sending over the money, which we could talk a little bit, bit about in a second to actually getting that product to you or, which is really cool for the beginners watching, you can have your supplier ship it directly to Amazon, get it checked in. Let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah. So I like that you brought up her question because I was looking at another question that she dropped about the money. So we'll, we'll hit both of those questions. So okay. the whole process works like this. So I'm going to kind of answer a couple of their questions all in one big answer. So once we find the product, we find the supplier, we negotiate with the different suppliers, we reach out to the different suppliers. This is supplier. Supplier number A is who we want to go with. We negotiated price, the specifications. They know exactly what our product is, how we want it. Now it's time to initiate the manufacturing process. So it starts like this. In order for them to initiate and to start manufacturing, they require a 30% deposit. So let's just say that the order is $1,000. You would give them 30%, which is 300 bucks. That is going to initiate the process and the manufacturing process. Once the products are manufactured and completed, which can take anywhere between three days up to a month, depending on are you ordering 100 units or 100,000 units, depending on that, that varies. Um, usually if it's a generic product, they'll have it in inventory and they can slap your label on it and get it done quickly. They don't have to do it from scratch every single time. So that kind of those factors uh, differentiate and fluctuate. But once the manufacturing process is done, they will say, hey, it's done, it's time to ship, and that's when you pay the 70%. Now, if you are getting an inspection, the inspection, there are multiple different inspections. There is a pre and a post manufacturing inspection. So a pre is where before they manufacture, they go see the facilitate facility, they do their um, research on the facility, um, so on and so forth. And then they pop in during manufacturing. There is a post, which is what I usually recommend, unless you're dropping a lot of money with a new supplier, then you would get a pre and a post. And the post is before you alleviate the 70%, which is the big check, they will go and they will test your product. They'll fill out that big form that we talked about. And if anything is wrong, 
before you pay them the 70%, they have to remake the product, fix it, rectify the issue. So that's a way that you CYA yourself, right? You cover your rear end. Um, if you don't choose an inspection company, you can say, hey, I want pictures. I want this. I want a sample. And once I approve it, then I'll pay the 70%. Now, the way that we pay the supplier, because another question I've seen is she asked, how do you pay them and how do you make sure you're safe? Um, I want to teach you a, a way, guys, that I recommend you, you paying these suppliers to make sure that you are safe and your hard-earned money is safe. So first and foremost, when we shop and we, we uh, send suppliers money through Alibaba, there is what's called Alibaba trade insurance, which is to the point where Alibaba has their own escrow account and their own insurance that they put just to keep everything safe and copacetic and ethical. So you have Alibaba trade insurance. That is one level of protection. But I like to take it not two, but three layers deep of protection to make sure that nothing can go wrong. So we want to make the first purchase through Alibaba and make sure we have Alibaba trade insurance. And we want to use a PayPal account. Now, you don't have to have a ton of money in your PayPal account. And if you don't have one, you can create one for free. And what we want to do is use add a method of payment. Even if you have a ton of money in your PayPal account, add a method of payment and use a debit or credit card. And that's adding a third layer of protection. So you have Alibaba trade insurance, you have PayPal, and then you have your financial institution. So now you have three layers of protection for your funds. That way, if anything happens whatsoever at one of those three layers of protection, you will get 100% reimbursement of your funds with zero issues. Um, once you pay that 70%, they are going to get your package ready to go. Now, based off of the shipping method that you use, um, that's going to determine the next process. So there's different ways that you can ship without overloading you guys and getting technical and nerdy because I know this is a lot to take in. There's basically EXW, there's FOB, and there's DDP. All you need to know is the difference between them. So you can rather pay a little bit more and have your supplier do everything, which is DDP. And that's what I recommend for beginners because the cost saving with going DDP and going EXW, which means that you're responsible for finding the freight forwarder, which is the company, excuse me, that's going to pick your product up from the supplier take it to the port or the docks where the boats are or the airplane is, load it, sign the tariffs, get it through customs, get it checked in through customs, sign the information, and then schedule for FedEx, UPS, DHL, or whoever to deliver it to Amazon. So the only time I recommend going EXW, which is where you're responsible for everything, is when you're doing large, um, large shipments because you will save some money. But if it's a test order, you're starting out, it's a micro launch, go with DDP, pay the extra 100 bucks, the extra 200 bucks, and have your supplier not only do everything for you, meaning manufacture it and get it to Amazon, but they are also responsible from point A to point Z, right? So hopefully that makes sense, but that's the entire process from logistics, manufacturing, um, and then um, shipping it directly from your supplier and getting it checked into Amazon. Once they check it in, it's going to be shipped directly to one Amazon fulfillment center. It changes based off of the product, based off of the amount, so on and so forth. No one knows the exact fulfillment center. Once they check it in, they scan it in, it's going to show live, and then they're going to disperse it to other distribution or fulfillment centers. That way, now they're in multiple different distribution centers. So when the consumer orders your product, it gets shipped to your doorstep in two days or less. And that's how the whole prime fulfillment logistics manufacturing process works. And, and we're starting to get close to the magic, right? We all talk about when the magic starts happening. This is one of the differences amongst you know, doing something such as wholesale or private label, more of these advanced methods, but talking about private label, you put in all that legwork for the research, you put in the legwork, you know, negotiating, finding the product, getting it sourced, inspected. If you decide to doing all your research, right? You put that upfront work in, right? But now once you start getting to step number three and four, when you go through the micro launch and then finally afterwards, you start scaling and optimizing, which we're going to talk about, you literally get to sit back and enjoy, right? You get to reap the rewards of all the hard work, right? It's like, you know, it's like spending all your time, like, you know, planting the seeds and watering it. And, you know, you're just, you're just watching, you know, watching the hard work just come about. And, you know, obviously it's, you know, there's no guarantees and you've got to do your homework and you've got to do your research. But if you follow what Josh is teaching, and again, we're going to dive so much deeper into this, uh, tomorrow and then Friday. And then obviously into the webinar, everything's going to come together.
But this is why we love this model so much. And this is why we're such a huge proponent of it. Because again, you put that upfront work in and then you get to enjoy the benefits. You're not always you know, running, 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 running to the next thrift store, to the next garage sale, to the next location. You get everything sourced, brought in to the Amazon FBA warehouses and Amazon's going to fulfill it. They're going to pick it. They're going to pack it. They're going to ship it. They're going to deal with returns. They're going to deal with any payment processor issues, any issues with the website. They're wearing all the hats. All you have to do, you're getting paid to go find those good deals and bring it to the market because that's what Amazon needs your help with. They need your creativity and they need your ability to go through and improve upon the product and add value and build a brand. And this is just super exciting, man. I'm so grateful that you took the time, man, with all the businesses you're running, your real estate business, you know, your Amazon business, having a family and kids, man. I'm just so grateful that you took the time to come here. And I really hope that, you know, a lot of the people are getting value. If you guys are enjoying this video, do us a big favor and smash that like button. Let us know in the comments that you're enjoying this video. You know, if you're, if you still have questions that you want answered, go to that link that's on the screen. It's the first link in the description as well, as well. It's rakenprofit.com slash FBA training. Seating is limited because we are not doing that on YouTube. And anyone who does webinars know that the webinars do cap you off at a certain amount of people. So seating is limited. You do have to sign up for that. There is going to be no replay. It's 100% free still, but it's not like this workshop where you can have you know as many people as possible come and watch, so on and so forth. So um, with that being said, Get the webinar, sign up for it. We're going to answer more questions. There's, there's questions in there about advertising and scaling and launching. We're going to be answering everything to do with the launch tomorrow. So I don't want to jump ahead. I want to keep everyone organized because this isn't a race. You, you've got to understand the fundamentals. You've got to understand the research phase before you understand the sourcing phase. You've got to understand the sourcing phase before you understand the launch phase. You've got to understand the launch phase before you start worrying about PPC and optimization and scaling and, you know, influencer marketing, which we're going to be talking about in the webinar. So is there anything else you'd like to touch on before I give away another $25 PayPal stimulus plan? Yeah, I think you hit on everything, brother. I'm just dying laughing because it's when you talked about the magical aspect of having this business run autonomously from home and being the main differentiating factor, you know, from all the other business models with Amazon, it's like this ray of light came from the heavens and just beamed on your forehead right now, man. I was just dying laughing, dude. It's like, you know, in the commercials where it's, ah, and then the beam of light's just on your head, man. So I'm super excited. Like Steve said, guys, you don't want to miss tomorrow. And if you missed yesterday, you want to go back. And I believe Steve's got it up. If he doesn't, I'm sure he'll get yeah. it up. But you want to make sure that you are sticking with every single aspect, every single day or part of this video. Make sure you're taking notes, guys, because this is a formula. It is a blueprint. It is a recipe to success with private label. And everybody knows about recipes. If you miss one part of the recipe, the food sucks. If you miss one part of a formula or mess it up, something blows up yeah. and goes boom. So we don't want any catastrophic failures. So we want to make sure that you guys have every component to the formula. So if you didn't watch yesterday, go watch yesterday. If you watched today and you enjoyed it, smash the like button, leave a comment because I read them all and I love seeing the, the positive results. And I will see you guys uh, tomorrow. I'm super excited, Steve. So I want to know um, what's before we get going, what's the one thing that you learned most from this video? Because I'm going to give away that $25 PayPal stimulus plan right now. And I'm excited for the video tomorrow. I think tomorrow's going to be probably one of the best videos. That's the secret because, sauce, man. The micro launch yeah. is like my proprietary secret sauce. Well, that in the in the skyrocket in scale. So if you guys are already selling on Amazon private label, you guys are going to want to watch the, the skyrocket in scale because I'm obliterating. I'm not worried about a cost. I'm not worried about competition or cost per bid or cost per click because what we're doing is we're escaping the competition. So I have some secret ninja hacks to give you guys on skyrocketing scale. So irregardless, if you guys are brand new and you just learned about this today or yesterday, or you guys are already in the trenches, like I think Pedro is, you guys want to stay throughout the series because all it takes is one gem to get exponential results, Steve. Awesome. So I'm going to go ahead right now and I am going to pick a winner. So put in the comments right now, what's the number one thing you learned from this workshop, workshop number two, and I am going to choose a winner. I need a, I need a, a countdown right now from five, Josh, and I'm going to pick somebody. A countdown from, from five to one? Let's do it, man. Let's, right. let's see that AMZ formula countdown, brother. You ready? 
five, four, <laughs> three, two, one. Awesome. Make it dramatic. Was that dramatic enough, Steve? I, I like it, man. I like it. <laughs> All right. And the winner is Ben Neptune. And Ben, this is actually a really great this is this is a really valuable lesson. Do not beat up your supplier. Now we're not talking physically, right? Doing any <laughs> Logan Paul Muhammad Ali move from the YouTubers out here right now. Don't take the same, don't make the same mistake, guys. Don't make the same mistakes. Don't spend hours personally texting them and messaging them and don't beat them up for pennies. There's an old saying, don't jump over dollars for pennies, right? And that's what you'll be doing if you beat them up and you're focusing on those few pennies on the front end. Because on the back end, when you want to charge more than your competition and your product is, is, is not it's superior, it's not as good, uh, it's inferior, it's not, it's not as good, you're not going to be able to do that. So what would Apple do? Try to be the Apple, become the category king. Awesome. So Ben, send us a screenshot from inside your YouTube. Send that over to rakeandprofit at gmail.com. Let us know that you won. Give us your PayPal information and we'll send over that information. We're just going to have to verify that it's you. And uh, yeah, appreciate everybody watching live. Again, if you did not watch workshop number one, go on my YouTube channel right now and watch it. You want to make sure you watch one, then two, then three, then four, because it's all leading up to the webinar that's going down on May 12th. Rakeandprofit.com forward slash FBA training. Everything that we're talking about, everything that we're discussing, you might be thinking, holy mackerel, there's so much value. There's so much knowledge being dropped. This is just the beginning. It's all going to come together May 12th. This is what it's all leading up to. You've got to make sure you watch all these videos before it so you're prepared and you can get the most out of it. But with that being said, appreciate you all. Josh, thank you so much for coming on. We'll see you all tomorrow, 7 p.m. Eastern time. We're going to be talking about the micro launch. Enjoy the video, review your notes, and we'll talk soon. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Have a great night.